Welcome to Skin, Spirit, and Sacred, a place to claim your beauty, pleasure, and experience joy in the body. I'm so happy you're here to go on the sacred journey from skin to spirit with me. Mahalo. Welcome, Marina here. Our first episode of a brand new podcast where we'll go from skin to spirit in a sacred journey. I am so excited you're here. I will open this with one of my favorite quotes said by Dostoevsky. Beauty will save the world. Gosh, this is, I have this quote written in, uh, by my computer right here, and it gives me so much uh, uplifting and positivity. And when I look forward to my future, one of the things that I see in it, in the future, is beauty. And yet, what I also love about this quote is that it's layered. It's layered with questions. It's layered with, with things that makes me think about saving the world. And what I do want to talk about in this podcast, however, is the layering and the layering of skin. <laughs> it is likely you have come to this podcast through my brand, Mahalo Skincare. Welcome. I have had the privilege of creating beauty products for now thousands and thousands of uh, people around the world for uh, 11 years. It has been a thrill, a joy of my life uh, working in this beauty industry. And specifically, what um, the part of this that I absolutely love is connecting, connecting with so many of you, connecting in the safe, personal space that is created in the container of skincare, of beauty, where beauty becomes a catalyst for, for me and for so many of you to tap in deeper into ourselves, to share stories, to share challenges, to share questions, and again, to seek deeper connection with ourselves and with each other. It's an interesting space where I have so many women email to me with with your intimate heart, beautifully gentle, vulnerable stories and to read them and to see that you have gained access to opening into that vulnerability through your rituals of skincare. And to clarify here, for me, vulnerability is strength. Like Brene Brown, I love her so much, how she highlights as well that for us to truly be vulnerable, it takes an immense amount of courage and personal strength and openness of heart. And how beautiful it is that through rituals of skincare, through loving on ourselves in the ritual of cleansing, masking, applying the balm or the oil, we allow ourselves to well, I often call this, put on the empress crown on our head and to say, I am worth it. Not to use that um, trademarked line from another company. What I also reflect on and things that I absolutely love doing is when I get to connect with you in person through the either skin masterclasses that we, that we host or women groups. And now that I get to do this through podcast. I'm really looking forward to becoming more intimately connected with you. In those masterclasses, what I found so inspiring and in a way giving me wings is to hear your stories in masterclasses or women's groups, how, and this is such a <laughs> blueprint parallel stories to so many of us. I also relate to that as going through some challenge in your life or something that is happening where you are needing or, or we are, let me say we are needing, because this is also my own experiences, when we're needing that something that pull us out, pull me out from the, the difficulties that I find myself in. And by simply picking up uh, and learning to care for myself through skin, it, it's like something that I would just not think would be a gateway to finding that breakthrough. 
and then suddenly finding, wow, I cleansed, I masked, I applied this body oil on my body, and suddenly I feel I can do it. I feel I am worth it. I've heard so many stories of women also never actually learned or never perhaps even allowed themselves to do skincare. It's it's actually quite quite common, quite common for women to just say, yeah, I just wash my face with a simple simple soap and moisturize with coconut oil. Disclaimer, there is nothing wrong with that. You love on yourself in whatever way is true to you. What I would love to invite you here, however, is approach your body from a perspective, from an angle, from a a viewpoint of a temple, of a goddess temple. What I've also heard is women care for themselves only for the way they appear to others. What I mean by that is that they would just use whatever affordable cleanser and moisturizer moisturizer really quickly and then spend more time in applying makeup for it is something that is then validated from the outside world so that that self-care more shows up in the way of how they actually end up caring for others in a way they appear versus taking time in your bathroom for applying the and you know what now that I'm saying this you actually can, and I have done this, you can, if you, if, if you love your, using your coconut oil, it's actually a phenomenal ingredient, but using that coconut oil in a ritualistic way, in a way that it inspires you to put that empress crown on your head and say, oh, here I am, I'm worth it. Now, let's drop into ease by creating a sacred space. And for me to honor your precious time for being here. I invite you to take a deep, beautiful, conscious breath to nourish your body and exhale. We will do an easy grounding practice to connect our physical bodies to that of the earth. For that, let's visualize something that you can use as your grounding cord. You can visualize a tree, a waterfall, redwoods, or a stack of cupcakes. Now bring that visualized cord to the end of your spine and connect it at the root of your first chakra. Let it drop to the center of the earth, connecting your body with that of the earth's core. Feel the earth's gravitational pull take away stuck energy from your body. You are now united with the mother of all. Take another breath. (sighs) Let's begin. What inspires me in creating Mahalo skincare products and what I've become known for is the aromatics of Hawaii, of the exotic plants and botanicals, is when you inhale that scent of paradise, there is a shift that happens in your space. That crown of empress, she just lights up on your head by itself. And that is a magical and incredible thing. So skincare, now let's take it a little bit further from from just the intimate spaces of our bathroom. Skincare takes really many forms. As a business, as an industry, it is a gazillion dollar industry, and it is laden with control, projection, projection by other people like the corporations or the, what do you call them, venture capitalists or be, or even more, the top 10 richest people in the world. They are often the ones that dictate what beauty is, what skin is and what meaning we give to it. What I would love to do is to take a look in a different perspective where skin can be liberated from these projections, from the expectations that are placed upon it, that are woven into it by our perceptions of beauty. And 
These perceptions of beauty, they don't have to be modern. This has been happening for millennia. This goes and has been found in ancient world that I often also admire. A quick example to that is, say, pale skin, right? Pale skin that has not been touched by sun. In one period of time, it is a sign of wealth, aristocracy, and privilege. In other times, if someone is pale, that means they're poor or don't have access to, you know, go on vacations and get a tan. And then vice versa, if somebody's tan and so, so it goes. And But in all of this time, skin is just skin. <laughs> so dare I give the voice to skin to speak for itself, to tell me, to tell us what it is that it wants to communicate, what it is that it wants to be. Ah, this is a better one. What is it that it wants to feel? And now I'm tapping onto something here. So being our largest organ, skin is still bigger than itself. It's the biggest, largest organ and still bigger than itself. Skin is our protection, protects us from the environment, protects our organs inside. And skin is also a gateway. It is a gateway to sensation, to pleasure, to communication. What comes to mind now is one of the five love languages is expressed through skin. It is my second love language, and that is physical touch. Touching ourselves, touching each other, being touched is the way, without communicating the verbally, is how we understand, receive, or, or reject love. And this is where the feeling comes into play. That mindful or not mindful, that attention or rejection, in this way, a skin becomes um, a conductor. It, in a way, completes the loop of either a self-love or self-rejection. It's a, it's that, it's a communication. Through touching our skin with love, with affection, with care, with mindfulness. And I know you know what I mean. When you are being touched, when somebody comes to you and touches your skin, looks you in the eye, and is fully and completely present. There, even as I say this, I get goosebumps. <laughs> Here we go. My skin is communicating to me and says, I love when that happens. Even, you see, even that memory of that experience is embedded where? In my brain, in my nervous system. When we are touched, when our skin is touched with love and mindfulness and presence, the, the communication through the nervous system and all of the, the, the words right now escapes me, they travel into the brain and they translate that into happy hormones. <laughs> and in this, Skin is so much more than the scientific or medical terms of the dermis and the epidermis and the sebum production. Skin is an intelligence. It is a sensory computer of its own kind. I would like to invite you to discover, if you have not yet, or indulge yourself to more pleasures of Mahalo Skin Care. We are a Kauai-based, artisan-crafted line of facial beauty care, offering you high-performance, luxurious skin treatments that target skin inflammations, environmental damage, prematurely aging concerns, and offer you nutrient-dense support for a healthy and glowing complexion. You can find us online at mahalo.care. Hey, let me pause for a minute in diving into the metaphysical, romantic, esoteric look at the skin and go back to skincare and what I have been involved in for the past 
15, 20 years of creating botanical potions that treat and care for my skin that is troubled. I have a troubled skin condition, have acne, have other inflammations. And the potions that I create for so many of you, I love working with plants. I love working with plants because I see their leaves, their blooms, their bark, the all of the spikes <laughs> as a different type of skin of the plant world. To me, plants are so much more than just their healing properties, that being anti-inflammatory and moisturizing, what really in itself is incredible. But to me, there is more in the way that they hold a vibrational frequency, the pulse of which is the language of the skin, the language of the plant skin is the language our skin understands. And to me, that is what makes it incredibly, it's not just magical, it's um, everything. It's miraculous, it's magical, it uh, makes me constantly be in awe how that communication happens. And as I say this, I, I, I start drifting into more of a romantic um, memories. And this memory came to mind when I was a kid, a young girl. I was very introspective, creative. And this memory came to mind. It was a spring day. I was sitting in the backyard of my grandmother's house and there was, uh, it was cherry blossoms season. I was catching these cherry blossoms in the wind. And as they were landing on my skin, I would sit and observe how the petal was melting and changing color, how it was affected by the heat of my perspiring palm. There was this interesting and unique metamorphosis that was happening. That was one pink cherry blossom petal. And then it was melted into my skin, how it was revealing the thin translucence of its veins, and it was almost disappearing on my palm. I now forget, is it macro or micro lens that's very zoomed in? My eyes was that, like that zoomed in lens. I was so, like, it's, it's that an embedded picture in my memory of that incredible moment, how that cherry blossom petal melted and in a way became a part of me. And that love, that uh, almost obsession with the plant world continues to today. I love working with plants as an adult. Those memories from my childhood, and I, I have many others that have just flashed before me, but I will share with you later. Those memories, they're bringing me this one-of-a-kind perspective on skin and plant relationship. And I believe that this is the, one of the biggest reasons that after all of these years, and despite me being a true artist, I'm a true creator at my core. Um, if you know human design, I'm an emotional manifester. So I creating ideas is in my blood and my in my spirit. But I have not grown tired or bored of making of repeating, uh, creating mahala products. Because to me, alive plant vibrations give communication care and support to our alive skin. Oh, I can go far as in this, but let's move on. Skin, huh? let's move on because a lot to talk about because skin is a very talkative organ. In my professional Ayurvedic training, which I will speak to in later episodes, core of the diagnostics of illnesses is based on observing and communicating with the skin. A similar approach is done in traditional Chinese medicine, in other healing, and even in modern medicine as well. But in Ayurveda, we'll look at the skin being pale, damp, oily, cold, red, thin, breakouts, rashes. There, there is like a whole list of pages and pages that are dedicated just looking at skin. Because skin is a communication dashboard. <laughs> I call this the check the engine light is on. 
is skin. And for this reason, when people write to me with questions, you know, we have um, acne or rosacea, it is never an isolated, I just have an acne. It is, again, a gateway into learning an opportunity to connect deeper. What is out of harmony in the body? What more or less of is needed to provide a holistic care for ourselves? And even with this, having said this part, skin is still so much more than that. I mean, how incredible it is. Skin is our gateway to spirit. And this is, this is the topic that really lights up my heart. The hashtag skincare or skincare routine hashtag is a heavily loaded um, section on social media. Like I was saying before, anything from those uh, 15 step routines to simple wash your face, anything. We love doing it. We love watching it. We love talking about it. Even if we're only watching our fa- washing our face with soap, watching those YouTube, whatever the social media videos is addicting. I mean, I have spent a few nights just watching different um, skin skincare videos. And why is that? Again, everything is so simple. Touching our skin, that palm to palm contact, that palm to face, palm to shoulder, palm to the rest of your body, has the brain release happy hormones. And this is a true story. You can ask science in here. In somatic practices, one of the easiest way to bring oneself out of anxiety or uh, shock is to touch your skin. When we go to the bathroom, when we have our moment of ritual or routine, whatever we do, when we touch and wash our face, when we touch and rub our palms, the skin sends the signals to the brain. It sends pleasure signals to the brain that trigger um, a cascade of happy chemicals that end up boosting your mood. So I often say I am a skincare drug addict. (laughs) Because when I indulge in a skincare ritual with that added mindfulness, added adoration, it's, a, it's like a cocktail of self-love, of dopamine, of endorphin that completely transforms my whole self. And this is where I feel it begins to be interesting. So the more of this mindfulness that we choose to add to our beauty routines, the more they become a ritual. And ritual does not have to be something grandiose or pompous. Anything can become a ritual as long as it's done with intention and devotion. I love the word devotion. A skincare ritual allows us to dive deeper into the layers, what connecting to your skincare can open you up to. It makes it bigger. And I'm not talking just about the epidermis layer. I'm talking about sensation of pleasurable connection, of intimacy of that moment, of you meeting you in a true, honest, unfiltered way. When Touch, without hearing or seeing, communicates volumes. (laughs) A sensation of acceptance, of permission, of pleasure given to you by you, accepted by you, from you. Oh, it's really incredible woman. Oh, man. This here is the creation of unwavering you. Really, in essence, we don't need to go to those expensive boot camps or train to rewild or feminine. We really don't even need the 15-step exuberantly expensive skin rituals. All we need is a mindful touch to our own skin to liberate, to connect, 
to put on that empress crown that shines. So when you walk out of the bathroom, you're love embodied. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story that came to mind um, that's related to that touch of the skin and putting on that empress crown. I've actually shared this story many, many years ago in an interview I'd done with Darling Jeannie from Beauty Heroes. And that story was when I was going through a very difficult divorce. And I've been finding myself just isolated, alone, and just crumbling on all, all areas. And no matter whom I've talked to or the therapy I've done, uh, at the end of the day, I would come home, even if I had friends over, I would close the door and I would be sitting in my bedroom. I would feel that deep, painful emptiness that would be very hard. It was, it was very hard to come out of it. It was very hard to spiral up from it. And what I remember the being the catalyst, the, the tipping point, as they say, in this sh shift of trajectory is when I, one day, I forgot exact details, but it might have been when I just made a batch of rare indigo balms or basically somehow I was holding a brand new jar of the rare indigo balm and the value of that product is $130. And it is an incredible facial treatment. The story is actually not about the plugging in the product, but it truly really is one of the gems of the line. And is used for facial care. I remember looking at it and there was this loud voice that kept saying, you are worth it. You are worth it. So I opened the jar and it was almost at the beginning, it was harsh how I would scoop. I scooped a large part and I, I, I stripped naked and I started massaging. At the beginning, it was, it was more like rough rubbing into skin. I was rubbing in this rare indigo all over my body in a way of I am claiming the worthiness of this $130 product that is meant for face. I am going to use it all over my body. I was, I, I was rubbing it into my knees. I was rubbing into even the heels of my feet as a way is that even my foot is worth that $130. And then it became more than the price. It became, I am worth the love and the vibration that has been infused from the plants. Each plant, there's like yarrow and morumuru and babasa, kukui, hibiscus. There's incredible bouquet of ingredients that part of this jar of the balm that I'm like, I am worth all of that bouquet all over myself. And I actually ended up massaging the entire jar onto my skin. I mean, I did end up being very, I had to shower uh, shortly after because it was, it was too much. But that ritual, there was actually a moment literally before the rare indigo all over my body and then after. It was, it was quite drastic in a way, but it was something that really snapped me out of saying, no, I am going to find a way to spiral up from the sadness, from the loss, from the emptiness that is in my heart and in my life. And what gave me access to it was loving and claiming. For In the beginning, yes, it was that very brash claiming of pleasure on my skin. And as it went on, my touch softened. My connection to my skin softened. I was actually able to then feel that, wait, my body does not like being touched in such a rough way. As I continued dancing my fingers along the shoulder and my thighs, I could feel that, well, first of all, it brought me to feel. Tapping into that memory, it, it, there's really such a, there was an, there was like bursting of my heart open. There was that finding of me. That was that, that rediscovery that, oh my gosh, I can feel again. I will feel again. And it was not in longing in somebody else to touch me. It was me. It was me giving me this touch. It was me giving this awakening. I can go on talking about this for hours, but 
yes, that was my experience of tapping into rare indigo, of using it instead of the face all over my body and really claiming, like for, in the beginning, forcefully claiming that crown on my head. So are you with me still? Let's follow this along a little further because ultimately this mindful skincare this mindful skin love ritual will bring you to this even deeper level where you might say, and I bet that you will say, well, now what? Is there more? Hmm. I love on me with this mask. I adore on me with this massaging this balm, be it on your face or all over your body. You feel how you blossom in pleasure when you mist with the botanical spray. The aromas of the skin potions, especially Mahalo, they truly transfix you. You see that your skin is glowing. You're starting to believe in those affirmations that are probably hanging in your uh, window, uh, in your mirror in the bathroom, as I do. Some of them have been there for gosh, many years, which I love them. And then there comes a moment, and that moment came for me and for so many other women that I know, where we pause and wonder, if I've gone this far from elevating my face washing, from basic routine face washing, to a ritual of beauty unveiling, can there be more? that I can do with my skin. So here we have it. <laughs> the skin, the caring, the connecting, the communicating to your skin on this deeper level brings us to connecting to our heart. This is where if you allow it, if you're curious, if you dive into it, where it can take you deep, this is where skin becomes the gateway to your heart. It becomes the gateway of connecting you to spirit. With that, I'm going to complete this first episode. I invite you to join me next week as we follow along on the sacred journey of weaving skin, spirit, sacred. I would like to invite you now to commit to a grounded action to integrate the sacred journey into skin from this episode. You can journal your realizations or better indulge to rituals of skincare with mindfulness, with attention. Rekindle a deeper layer of self-love and this does not have to be big, just one conscious, loving touch can be profoundly transformative to your skin and soul. It was a beautiful experience to share my love for skincare and plants with you. Let's enjoy a deep breath together. <sighs> your beautiful grounding cord will continue to release and connect you to Mother Earth for the next 24, 48 hours. I am grateful for you being here. And if you'd like to continue the sacred journey from skin to spirit with me, then hit the subscribe button. To enrich this experience, a poem from the prophet by Khalil Gibran. And the poet said, Speak to us of beauty. And he answered, Where shall you seek beauty? And how shall you find her? Unless she herself be your way and your guide. And how shall you speak of her? Except she be the weaver of your speech. The aggrieved and the injured say, Beauty is kind and gentle. Like a young mother, half shy of her own glory, she walks among us. And the passionate say, 
No. Beauty is a thing of might and dread. Like the tempest, she shakes the earth beneath us and the sky above us. The tired and the weary say, Beauty is of soft whisperings. She speaks in our spirit. Her voice yields to our silence like a faint light that quivers in fear of the shadow. But the restless say, We have heard her shouting among the mountains, and with her cries came the sound of hoofs, and the beating of wings, and the roaring of lions. At night, the watchmen of the city say, Beauty shall rise with the dawn from the east. And at noontide, the toilers and the wayfarers say, We have seen her, leaning over the earth from the windows of the sunset. In winter, say the snowbound, she shall come with the spring leaping upon the hills. And in the summer heat, the reapers say, we have seen her dancing with the autumn leaves, and we saw a drift of snow in her hair. All these things have you said of beauty. Yet in truth, you spoke not of her, but of needs unsatisfied. And beauty is not a need, but an ecstasy. It is not a mouth thirsting, nor an empty hand stretched forth, but rather a heart inflamed and a soul enchanted. It is not the image you would see, nor the song you would hear, but rather an image you see though your eyes are closed, and a song you hear though your ears are shut. It is not the sap within the furrowed bark, nor a wing attached to a claw, but rather a garden forever in bloom and a flock of angels forever in flight. People of Orphalis, beauty is life when life unveils her holy face. But you, are life, and you are the veil. Beauty is eternity, gazing at itself in a mirror. But you are eternity, and you are the mirror.